So now we're going to talk about strategically reading through a particular resource. So we're going to go back to the scholarly article I showed you as an example earlier. So the first thing I do want to point out is my own bias. So this is something of course to reflect on and keep in mind, um, but I search for metacognition and curiosity because these are a couple of things I'm interested in. Um, and to be entirely honest, the first time I searched this, I did misspell curiosity. So when I searched metacognition and curiosity as it was misspelled, I got no hits. So databases are great, but they are not spell checkers. So if you find that you're not getting any hits, just check your own spelling like I did. All right, so I'm pointing out my own bias. So again, I searched metacognition and curiosity, again, spelled correctly, and I got a nice list of hits. In the one I picked, number five in Academic Search Premier, I clicked that one because it had some nice pictures. <laughs> I think about why this is important to recognize or to think about because we like pretty graphs. We like being able to look at something that is visually pleasing or easy to digest visually. So keep that in mind. That's one of my own biases. Just make sure you're aware of your own biases as you go out and do research. So I have an article that's part of a list of search results. So how do I know this is the perfect resource for me or a good place for me to get started with my research? So your first line of defense to see if this is the right fit for you is to look at the abstract. Does the abstract sound kind of close to what you're interested in? Does it capture your interest in any way? Um, this is again going to be your first line of defense in selecting an article or passing it for something else. Again, always check out those keywords and subject terms. You're going to be able to buff up your vocabulary this way. And again, it's a great way to see how experts talk about your subject or talk about this topic. For me, next time I search, I might include thought and thinking or cognitive analysis in my search. For scientific articles, it's important to remember that very often these articles will follow a very precise formula. They're going to have an introduction, probably right before that they'll have the abstract, but then they have the introduction, methods, results, and the discussions and or conclusion section. So your job as an information seeking person is to just check out the introduction and then skip the stuff in the middle for now um, and go right to the discussion and conclusions. The stuff on the middle, so the results, the methods section, depending on what you're doing, you don't necessarily have to read through those sections. For the research I'm doing for this Wikipedia article, I don't necessarily need to understand the particular methods of how this experiment was conducted. I can instead focus on the introduction and the discussion and conclusion section, and that will give me a lot of information I need to come to my own conclusions. So for me, I might go back and check out the results section too. This section can help me understand the reasoning behind the discussion section or the conclusions section and gives me an opportunity to come to my own conclusions. I might also find I have my own questions to ask. It can be good to look through the results as well just to make sure everything lines up with the conclusions of the paper. So you might wonder why I'm leaving out the methods section so much. Um, so the methods are an excellent section to dive into as you become a more experienced researcher. Don't get hung up on the methods section right now, and especially not for your Wikipedia article. Um, there are numerous reasons to dive into the methods or methodology, but at this stage, and especially for this class, you don't necessarily need to read through that methodology section. Caveat? Always defer to the instructions of your assignment. So even though I say don't worry about the method, maybe you're taking a methods class right now and it's really important that you understand those. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that's a lot about determining if a scientific article is relevant for your work. And a lot of that holds true for other disciplines as well. Other disciplines might not have such a formulaic approach to their articles, um, but still check out the headings of each section in your article. Do these make sense? Do they seem interesting? Do they seem relevant? Is the introduction of a subheading relevant? Are they pulling things together appropriately? Again, it's ultimately up to you to determine if a resource is appropriate for your work, but hopefully these hints help.